Oh, Skyward Sword, how harsh I've been on you. Though I've stated multiple times that I hate it, I do recall some great memories I had with it, so it's not as bad as I remember. But then, after seeing the Let's Plays of it, now I don't blame myself for hating it initially. And by that, do you mean that even though you now like the game, watching Let's Plays of Skyward Sword made you think that you had good reason for hating the game in the past? Here's how buying it went when it came out. You go to GameStop, pick it up, then go back home and play it. You find out that you can't play it without a Wii Motion Plus accessory. So you go back to GameStop, and then play this game, and you're in for some good and bad times. Did that really happen to you when you first bought the game? It doesn't really concern me, but since you bought that up, I just wanna know. Yeah, that's hilarious. Alright, look, there's the barrels. Let's just get them and go. The blend works in areas like Elden Volcano, but in Skyloft, it's as good as writing with permanent marker over crayon. Really? I mean... If you're going to say that Skyloft doesn't look that pretty in Skyward Sword's graphical engine, then fine. But seriously, Ryan Perman Marker over Crayon? I mean, I remember trying it myself, but can you think of a better analogy than that? Cause I don't think that's a real phrase. Oh, woof. While we're at it, let's talk about the gameplay. It's good, and I was wrong about the controls. They do respond, except that the enemies have better AI making them more of a threat. Well, I sort of have one little argument about you changing your mind on the controls. I see information about Skyward Sword at E3 and apparently, the technicalities of the Wii caused the controls of the game to be so unresponsive. It's not just the enemy AI either, which is why I guess you have to use a Wii Motion Plus to play it. I don't play that much of Skyward Sword myself, I mean I played a little bit on a cruise and I kinda stopped, but I just wanna point it out. What I'm trying to say is, I got nothing against you changing your mind on the controls, but I do agree with your past rants on Skyward Sword when you rant about how bad the motion controls are. So you probably should have said that the controls are more awkward than unresponsive. What I do have a complaint about is the lack of exploration that makes Zelda so great. Mind explaining how Skyward Sword lack exploration? I mean, I don't really have much experience with Zelda. I play a little bit of Sunday game before I quit due to wondering where the heck am I supposed to go. I know it's just me, but there will be quite a number of you who aren't familiar with the game of Zelda either, so it wouldn't hurt for you to tell us about it. Even if Zelda is one of the most iconic franchise video game, and honestly, I don't mind its popularity. Hey, uh, we need that TNT, so if you could just uh, put this bag over your head and step aside, that'd be awesome. As if Ristar wasn't hair pulling enough, here we have Rayman to prove us wrong. Okay, I play both Ristar and original Rayman and with Ristar. While I do respect your opinion about how you think the game is anticipation, I kinda happen to be a pro at the game, not going to brag or anything, and was able to skip most of the pages using part of the levels. Another thing about Right Star to me is that it's more of a game where the harder you try, the easier it gets. I mean, due to losing to Kaiser Greedy multiple times, but eventually getting his pattern down, he went from pain to total joke, but in a good way of course. With Rayman, however, I agree that most of the level design choices are pretty dang ridiculous, honestly. I have yet to be Banland, but that's because I only play a GBA version. Oh, you're a cutie pie. I'll move for a kiss and sex. Extra lives are also extremely scarce, even though you're going to need them. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I never found myself going after the extra lives in this game. I don't know why. Though I like Bright Star, that only gives you five continues, or may give you ten. But then again, you're probably going to say that you lost them all instantly. But then again, Rayman also has the ability to save, so you don't have to reset the game every time you die or lose all your continues. Sometimes I literally get the feeling that they made this game terrible on purpose to make some kind of sick joke. That probably isn't the case, but if it is, then that's something you never do in video games. You never make a game bad on purpose. I don't think that UE Pictures and Ubisoft are trying to deliberately make the original Rayman terrible on purpose for that sick joke. Despite the game receiving overwhelmingly positive reviews, all Ubisoft wanted to do was create a platforming IP for people to enjoy or for Ubisoft to compete with Nintendo's Mario or Sega Sonic to, to, um... You know what? I have no goddamn clue. Let's just say that this list was made before TSP originally told me that the original Rayman wasn't properly playtested. Hence why the low design is so ridiculous. The way I was doing his number 4 entry for the Game of Hearts 3D, since I literally got no count points for it. Alright, come on man. Just hurry up and plow her so we can get the hell out of here. No way, dude. I may have boned a mutant brain monster, but I am drawing the line at this thing. It's just Donkey Kong in a bikini. The Mario & Luigi RPG series is one of the best series in the Mario franchise. With fun and addicting games such as Superstar Saga and Partners in Time, 
you will be likely to enjoy at least one of these fun adventures. If you're wondering why he only bought Superstar Saga and Partners in Time, aside from being the first in the series, it's because he considered them his favorite in the series. With Bowser's Night Story, he initially didn't like it since he found it too easy, but he's starting to have second thoughts about it. And with Paper Jam, which he did like, he also felt like that the game did suffer at points on the Paper Toe mission. And the other Mario Luigi game, well... But not all of them were games I would play through again. Mario Luigi Dream Team is a good example of this. How about you just say that Mario Luigi Dream Team is an example of a game you won't play through again? Because at that one point about how Dream Team is a good example isn't really needed, other than to emphasize your point. I know you don't want to sound too generic, but still. Is Dream Team bad? Not necessarily. It's actually pretty fun. Until you get to the 70% mark. When I first played through this game, I went from, I don't want this game to end anytime soon, to, when will this game end? Question. Did you reach the 75% mark after you made your top 23 game? Because maybe you should regret putting that game on the number 10 entry. Oh wait, he did say that he regret that decision. No boom boom? No boom boom. Oh, fine. I'm serious about the paper bag though. Well, I guess that getting boring after a while does kind of fit with the whole sleep thing of this game setting. But this is a game where you go into dreams. The least you could do is make it, I don't know, atmospheric? Make it feel like more than just a faded side-scroller of an area you're in. First off, what's up with that YouTube bar on top of this footage? I didn't try to get footage for any content you make, but why don't you use some video converter so we can get your footage without any YouTube bars? And unfortunately, this isn't the first time this happened, since all the time during the number one entry on his Redux of the most hated characters list. And secondly, the free yes is a handheld, and handhelds are going to have its fair share of limitations. So, of course, the dream world will look kind of bland. I mean, what are you expecting the dream world will be like on the free yet? HD and beauty overload? I mean, this isn't a Wii U game. I'm fucking dead, Sonic. Phew, thank God. I'll honestly take death right about now. That little froggy that was supposed to be dead just hopped into my office and told me what happened. Metroid Other M. Well, well, well. Look at what we have here. The game that disappointed thousands of people around the world. And I'm going to bet that there are a lot of people who will find a game much more disappointing than this one. Sonic 06 comes to mind. I mean, I played Sonic 06, but it's pretty much, much one of the most notable games when disappointments brought up. Look, after this commentary and my next commentary, I will do a commentary involving Sonic 06. I can't tell you what it is since the user took that video down and I don't want to talk about it, and you guys will probably laugh at me since that video is a pretty dang old drama. Oh, Frogger? Clearly that was his ghost. You didn't know about this? He's a lying ghost frog now who hates Italian dudes. What about Luigi's mutilated corpse in that barrel? The game plays decent, in some points. Other times I have to ask, why did they make Samus walk so painfully slow for literally no reason at times? Okay, I haven't played the game either, but I'll try to counteract your point. But anyways, are you sure you're not the one causing Samus to walk painfully slow? Why can you not move around in first person view? What are you expecting? Metroid Prime? I mean, this isn't just a first person shooter. And who in the right mind came up with these stupid search segments to look for stuff that'll sometimes blend in with the background? No offense, Meta, but either you need better vision or a better TV. Other M also has only three main sectors to it, while Fusion had six. This is only important as in terms of Metroid continuity, this game took place far before Fusion, even though Fusion came out first on a GBA. Classic Luigi, always napping in a barrel. You want to know what the saddest part of it all is? I can't bring myself to hate this game. Yeah, this game is bad. It's really, really bad. And I think it would have been better if this game was never made. But for some reason, whenever people say it's a bad game, I just can't bring myself to agree with them for some reason. If you're going to say a game is bad, what the meaning of saying you don't hate it? Yes, you can say you dislike it, but not hate it. And I brought up in my first country on you that dislike and hate aren't exactly the same thing. But if you're also going to bring up the fact that you don't dislike the game either, then don't call a game bad while saying you don't like it either. I'm sorry, but like I said in the Pokemon Coliseum entry on this list, pick one or the other. But one thing's for certain, it still deserves its spot on this list. And even though this game wasn't responsible for the series' hiatus, maybe we wouldn't have thought that if Nintendo had, I don't know, given us a word about it. Okay, why did Nintendo tell anyone that game is or isn't responsible for its franchise hiatus? I'm gonna try and bring up the fact that Nintendo was debating whether to continue Metroid after the flaw of that game. 
But anyways, let's just skip to the number one entry. In other words, the main reason I want to commentate on this video in the first place.